And so now let's move on to momentary effects. I'm going to skip Stompbox presets because the only Stompbox preset I have uh, is tied to this aux box, and that's probably another video uh, that I should talk about that. Um, we'll mention it, you know, under expression pedal and external switch setup, but the actual triggering method I'll talk about later. Uh, so and we have momentary uh, presets as well, and again, you first have to make them over here. I mentioned before these are, you know, things like loopers and tap tempos. And you would, I just literally just copy these over. So if you click one of these, I don't do anything extra in any of these uh, particular uh, momentary effects presets. They're just kind of as is, because they're only really sending one message. Uh, these aren't tied to amplifier channel selections and, you know, triggers in Ableton Live. It's just controlling guitar rigs. So you wouldn't have to add anything extra over here uh, if that's what you were trying to do. Um, so anyway, uh, that's pretty much it there. Um, again, there's, there's some other things we should cover uh, eventually. And that's an expression pedal setup. Um, but we'll talk about that when we do expression pedals. Uh, the next thing is bank setup. So you can name the banks just by double clicking over here, whatever you want. Again, these names are kind of arbitrary, so I'd, if I were you, I would ignore them. Um, but anyway, um, you actually note over here, I have these two external switches, uh, which again are coming from this mysterious box over here. Uh, if you have external switches, they'll actually add two columns here. So if it doesn't look like this, that's probably why. Um, but it's to, to fill in these cells, uh, all you do is right click and select the patch or stop box or momentary effect preset that you want to put in there. Uh, so if I want a patch preset, it brings up a little menu here and you can scroll down to say I want tremolo eighths on channel two, I select that patch preset and now it occupies that cell. By the way, each one of these cells is really a switch. Uh, so, you know, this first cell is a switch one, second cell is switch two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or however many buttons your particular Gradius may have. And plus additional external switches, which may be uh, the case. Um, uh, the only other thing I, I think I should cover is uh, something unique here, uh, and uh, that's the browser. Uh, I think, you know, considering how much memory is on these things, I think all the, you know, everybody should have a browser, uh, especially if you have more than a few uh, presets to have to go through. Um, but these are actually really useful. Um, you can scroll between um, uh, different programs and uh, whatnot. And uh, it's quite useful. And you actually note I, in the uh, banks over here, I have two. I have a previous next and another previous next. They kind of are written a little different, but uh, this is kind of an interesting thing. So I have two previous next because um, what I want to be able to do is uh, one, I want to be able to scroll through only guitar rig uh, presets. And so uh, that's, you know, if you actually look over here, I'm actually changing the guitar rig preset, but you, you can't hear any of the amp click changes. Okay, and that's because all it's doing is moving between guitar rig. It's only sending data um, that guitar rig reads. It has nothing to do with any other MIDI channel. Uh, and these buttons are just note on offs tied to uh, uh, what guitar rig wants to read and see as a scroller. You know, it's kind of a scrolling button. Um, and so that's what those are. Those are actually momentary uh, presets, uh, as you saw before. Uh, but then you have this guy over here, these two buttons over here. Uh, and what these are are the uh, next and previous buttons. And if you actually look, it's kind of coincidental. These are scrolling now through um, the, the presets that you've stored in the Gordius. Uh, so it has all these guys here. And th the real powerful thing here is that if you didn't put them in your banks, any of these presets, say I go to one of these banks, uh, you know, hair ties bank, whatever the heck that means, uh, and I click that one, uh, well, you'd have to pre-program these into these buttons first. And so there's no way to get to any of the other uh, presets uh, uh, presets uh, in uh, the Gradius without having this available. So you see all these PCs, even the ones that are undefined? Um, you can get to them all uh, using this uh, next and previous guy here, and you right click and you hit go to, and that's what this previous button is. And then corresponding, this is what this next button is uh, right here. So you would select those, and now you can scroll through all the Gradius presets, and these will, if you have them programmed as such, here, listen for the clicks, you can hear the amp clicking channels. Uh, if, there's channels if there's multiple MIDI channel messages being sent on those presets, it'll actually do them. So it's kind of a nice thing if you want to you know, scroll through all the presets that the Gradius has, which includes other MIDI channel messages, or if you just want to you know, stay on there and stay on that channel and just try different guitar rig presets uh, over that. Um, and so that's why I have two here. And then on the top, I have my Ignator channel one, two, three, four. And that's the only message that sends. And again, those are just presets I've uh, uh, pre-programmed uh, in the uh, software. Uh, so I find that a particularly useful thing. Um, you know, it's probably pretty handy for, handy for a lot of people. 
And uh, the last thing, I think the only thing I need to talk about is uh, global uh, uh, banks here. Uh, this guy here, this first one, this you can't get rid of. Uh, and so I have a couple global effects here. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about this one until we talk about expression pedals, but the first one's tap tempo. And what I want is this tap tempo button here to be on any single bank that I'm in. I don't, I don't care if I'm in uh, this particular bank. Uh, I don't care if I'm in this bank. Um, or this one, I want the tap tempo to be active no matter where I am uh, in any of these particular uh, banks. So um, that's, that's really useful to me because I use tap tempo to synchronize uh, delay timings in particular uh, or to set up the looper uh, if I want to have a fixed, uh, you know, if I want two measures exactly, I can make sure the tap tempo is right first and everything just makes sense that way. So uh, again, this is just a note on and off. It's a momentary uh, effect preset. Um, and uh, I have it mapped into Guitar Rig. I'm not using uh, the Gradius' internal metronome uh, and clock, which it, it does have. I uh, just opt not to use it. So easier this way for me if, uh, since Guitar Rig already has it. Um, so that's a global preset. So anything you want to be available for all the banks, um, and again, this just happens to be an external, but say I put it on, on, on preset 4 or switch 4 and it was global, no matter which bank I was in, it would always be on switch 4. Uh, and so uh, again, if you want it everywhere, uh, that's how you do it. Okay, so um, the next thing we'll talk about is um, expression pedals and external switches. I think that's the next uh, progression in this whole, this whole shebang. Uh, we can get started on that.